Last time on Shadow Peace, the battle between the commander of the Grand Line, Emporio Ivankov, and the Marine Admiral Greenbull entered its final stage. With a special concoction of hormones, they managed to severely debuff the wooden monster. It was all going well until the forest human exploded by using firecracker seeds. He thought that this would not only deal damage to the revolutionary, but also help himself with regaining his senses. However, even that wasn't enough to negate the effects of the hormone attack, and that enraged Aramaki further. The creature that controlled nature was widely attacking, leading Ivankov to a target location and then starting an all-out 360 degree barrage of unavoidable attacks. And at that point, the newcomer leader accepted their own fate and activated their final trump card, the Hormone Overlord, a mixture of ancient extinct hormones and futuristic yet undiscovered ones took over their body, resulting in agony that was just undescribable. Their entire body turned pitch black, just like when somebody would use arm and haki. Then they got hit by Greenbow's attack. Below them, a sea of red had formed, but they themselves remained standing. Not only skin, but also hair, pupil, and everything else turned black, making Ivankov look like the darkest kind of shadow. This technique truly was a last resort, and would kill the user when it ended. But at least this way, they could make sure that Greenbull would not make it to the final and last battle of the war. Just changing your appearance wasn't enough to get a reaction, unless you call the same sort of brutal attack a reaction. Roots as massive as buildings were thrashing around furiously. From every single direction, destruction ensued. The blood that was just covering the floor below Ivankov was now gone. The roots were soaked in it. They were thriving and growing from the nutritious liquid. With more power than ever, they smack and smack and smack. And yet the newcomer doesn't move an inch. It was like they transformed into an otherworldly being. A massive, unmovable mountain. Or maybe something even more unimaginable. The, but their power was still continuously growing. Not much of a consciousness was left. It was more like Ivankov changed into a being with only one mission. Destroy Greenbull. The toughening process went on for a while. And the Marine Admiral didn't stop attacking for even a second during that time frame. This final form proved to be even more of a menace than expected. As soon as it reached that stage, when the roots smashed on the Hormone Overlord again, they just shattered into pieces. However, Aramaki went on another barrage of attacks. This time though, they didn't even reach the Lord's body. They rotted before even coming into contact. Every form of nature was shot, thrown or even whacked against them. But all just ceased to exist. Then the attacking side switched. The Shadow New Kama rushed towards Greenbull, showing no signs of fear, or rather, no signs of any emotions at all. Their attacks took chunks out of the forest human's body, and even though he wasn't supposed to feel pain, as this wasn't his real body, his screams were real. Through all the different hormones, pain could be perfectly emulated, and there was nothing he could do against that. Any form of defense he brought up immediately withered away and the pain was worse than anything he experienced before in his life. When only a chunk of his face was remaining and all the roots and nature around them had rotten, he even thought that this was okay. After all, he knew that Ivankov would also die as soon as the transformation would end. He closed his eyes as he had done enough, awaiting the death of his wooden clone and his return to Marine HQ. But that didn't come. Instead, he suddenly regained feeling inside of his body parts that were already missing. He reopened his eyes and saw him still, still getting punched, but rather than getting damaged, the attacks were healing him. Why was this happening? Ivankov could have already defeated him, but it seemed like that wasn't the end of it. With his energy regained, he attacked once again, and yet, once more, everything turned into dust. He was being played with, and that to the highest degree. Obviously, anger overtook him, but as soon as he felt that emotion, the monstrous revolutionary decimated him into pieces again. So now it was over, for real this time. He could rest until they set sail to attack the Filler Bark and Blackbeard Pirates on Hachinosu. Actually, no. He got revived again. Greenbull stood up, his anger had already disappeared, only the memories of the incredible pain remained. Just going on the offensive did nothing for him, so he started using his observation haki in full blast, only to get overwhelmed in an instant by what he felt. 
The air around him grew unnaturally still, as though the very atmosphere recoiled from the presence of something beyond understanding. His breath caught in his throat, every muscle locking into place as if his body itself had sensed the impending terror before his mind could fully grasp it. He died again, but not even a second later he was in perfect condition again. Before him stood a figure, no, a shadow. All memories that this was once Ivankov just a little while ago were overshadowed by the terror it induced already. It was jet black, a void darker than the deepest abyss, swallowing even the faintest glimmers of hope or sanity. The hormone overlord's outline was barely discernible, its form shifting and warping as if it could barely contain the chaotic energy that surged within it. It radiated an oppressive force that seemed to stretch time, making every second feel like an eternity of dread. Suddenly, Greenbull's chest tightened, as if invisible hands were crushing his lungs. But that shouldn't be possible. His wood clone doesn't even have any organs to begin with. However, the sheer fear he felt for the Overlord overrode any sense of reasoning. The moment he became aware of the creature's existence, it was as though his very soul began to unravel. A wave of pure, unrelating agony surged through him striking deeper than physical pain as though it was tearing apart the core of who he was with every additional death. The pain wasn't something his mind could process in full, it was like a nightmare made real, like reliving every moment of fear, loss and suffering he'd ever experienced all at once, magnified a thousandfold. His knees buckled, hitting the cold stone beneath him with a thud, though he barely registered the impact himself. His vision blurred, his surroundings melted away, consumed by a darkness that poured out from the creature in suffocating waves. This thing, this pitch black being wasn't just powerful, it was chaos incarnate, death incarnate. His skin felt as though it was burning, but the fire was not external. It was in his blood, his nerves, every fiber of his being screaming in torment. The figure didn't move, not yet. It didn't have to after all. Its presence alone was enough to crush him under an unbearable weight, an invisible hand pressing down on him, demanding submission. He felt his sanity slip, little by little, as if each moment in the presence of this force brought him closer to oblivion. His senses were assaulted, overwhelmed by something primal, something too vast to comprehend. He could hear it, not with his ears, but in the deepest recesses of his mind, a sound like the cracking of reality itself, echoing in a hollow, empty voice. Aramaki's heart pounded against his ribs, harder and harder, with every death he experienced, until it felt like it might explode any second, but still, he couldn't look away. In its presence, speed was meaningless. The hormone overlord didn't have to move fast. Its very existence was a kind of speed, a force that transcended time, stronger and faster than anything mortal eyes had ever seen or imagined. And the man knew without a shred of a doubt that nothing could stop this. It was then that the entity shifted its appearance one last time. A woman, half dead, half alive. The very face of death appeared in front of Greenball. However, this shape only lasted for an instant, until it became barely perceptible again. Even the Hormone Overlord couldn't last in this shape for a long time. But this was enough to make everyone on the island notice their momentary appearance. Greenbull gasped and for the briefest moment he felt the end of all things. There would be no fighting this. There would be no escape. He was already lost and every inch of him screamed with the truth of that. The creature that was once Emporio Ivankov advanced and in that single step the universe collapsed inwards. At least to Greenbull it did. His body ceased, bones turning to ice, and in his mind he was falling deeper and deeper into an endless nightmare, until he shook up, back at Marine HQ. Crying like a newborn baby, and quickly changing into vomiting furiously, only to end up crawled on the ground, shaking in fear of what he had experienced. The final battle of subordinates had ended. Ivanko's body turned into dust, and returned to nothing. Greenbull had been traumatized until his very last day on this planet. Now only one battle remains. And I hope you look forward to that. This was a bit of a different switch up for me. And yes, it might be what you're thinking that Ivankov did. But I am not really revealing it yet. Maybe I'm going to reveal it in the comments a day later or something. But I'm wondering if you could understand what was happening to Ivankov during this hormone overlord thing as well. So now I hope this battle 
was a banger. I really wanted to end it with a traumatization of Green Ball. Green Ball is a character that I feel like has been downplayed in the community and by Oda a lot, so I gave him time to shine. He did well in fights, he did a lot of things, he even did well back on Wano. But now he has suffered a massive defeat, a traumatizing defeat against the Hormone Overlord, a chaotic being, death incarnate, and just something that will never appear again, as Emporio Ivanka has already died at the end of this battle. But for now, that's all from me for today. All that's left to be said is stay happy, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay cultured. Pyro, out. Rest in peace, Ivankov. Bye!